cocktail chef work coming right at you. To be honest with you, I really don't know what to say to that a wonderful applause. Except, welcome to the Cocktail Chef Show. So here we go. Start with our tin. Get a healthy portion of ice. We're going to use a base. The base for this martini is going to be vodka. Nice, healthy portion. Now we're going to be using a sour apple liqueur. There's many different types. You can choose whatever type you like according to your budget. We're going to add a nice little healthy portion of that as well. Now we're going to take a little bit of melon. We're just adding a dash of melon in to richen it up, add that nice flavor that we're looking for. It's going to you know, help to blend with the apple, so it'll, it'll be something that will be more well-rounded than uh, some of the other apple martinis that you have out there that are more liquor-based, that you know, it's all liquor and very, very strong. So we're going to add a nice little bit of sours. Sours is important because you want to you don't add too much where it, it, it'll, it'll create more of a drink consistency. We want a martini consistency, so you want it, a lot of liquor and very little of the mix. Now we're going to be adding a little bit of simple syrup. You don't want to add too much because this martini is also known as a sour apple martini. So of course, if you add too much sweetener, then it's no longer sour. So we're going to take that and give it a nice shake. And get our martini glass, and we're not going to rim it with anything. Of course, rim, by rimming it, I mean putting like either salt or kind of some kind of sugar. Um, oh, there we go. And voila, our sour apple martini. And this can be garnished, of course, any way you prefer. In this case, I'm going to take a cherry, and we can even. Take a little wedge of apple, if you like, and just put a little slice in it so that it can stand on the edge of the glass, like so. And there we have it, the sour apple martini. <laughs> now it's time for the ouzo lemonade. OK, so we're going to take our tin, a nice portion of ice. Uzo. We must have the Uzo. Uzo! What do you think about Uzo? Opa! We get ready to party. Now, some of the best Uzo in the world comes from Lesbos, Greece, as does the Plomari. And we're going to get a nice pour in there. And a little on the floor, never hurt anybody. So, now we're going to go. This, per, this is primarily Uzo and um, sours, aside from the lemons. Now, the lemons in this drink, very important. Uh, what I like to do is, you know, these are very large lemons. I say one lemon, three quarters lemon to one lemon. So these are very rich, uh, juicy lemons. So we're gonna, I'm going to use three quarters. Quickly squeezing in there. And the way that I cut the, well, you know, we're going to talk about that in Garnish Garage. That's something for later. So here we are. We've got the ouzo. We've got the sours. Gonna give it a little sprig of the uh, simple syrup, and we've co of course got our lemon juice. You can actually leave the chunks of lemons in there if you want. I choose not to in this case. Now we're gonna give it a nice, vigorous shake, and here we have the perfect ouzo lemony glass. Beautiful etching on it. There we are, and. The ouzo actually um, gets a whitish or opaque 
color to it uh, when alcohol content drops. The anise oil solidifies, so then you get the little clusters in there of white uh, little po po uh, molecules. So here we have the ouzo lemony, and uh, of course we need the garnish. The garnish is important for any and every drink that you make, along with food. It's very important. So we're going to take a nice little thinly sliced lemon will and put it right in the middle. And there we have the ouzo lemony. Now, this needs to be tasted, and I uh, do not drink any longer. So, I, there you go. So, what I need is I need someone to taste this for me. So, please welcome Brent Douglas, everybody. There he is. There he is. So, Brent, I was saying to myself, I call myself Steph now. I said, Steph. I need someone to taste this Uzo Lomoni. Can you help me out with that? Yes, I can, Steve. Good, good, thanks. Please enjoy. <laughs> you know That's, what I'm thinking, Brent? That's a pretty good Uzo Lomoni. Right here at the cocktail chef. Cocktail chef, y'all. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The Greek espresso martini, or espresso martini, if you will. Now, this is one of my personal favorites when I used to drink. I no longer drink any more. So now we're going to show you how to make it so you too can enjoy this fine beverage at home. Now, we're going to take our tin once again. Start with our ice. Now, this, one, this one's a, a, a great drink because it's real easy to make. A lot of people um, called me at different restaurants I've worked at and would like to make this for their guests at their weddings. Um, and I keep telling them, no, I don't want to give away the recipe. So here's your chance. It's really quite simple. OK, we're going to take vodka. Oh, excuse me. Vanilla vodka. We're going to take a coffee liqueur. Some people use Kahlua. It's just a coffee liqueur. And of course, we have regular co uh, espresso. I'm sorry, not coffee, espresso. And we, what we want to do with this, and it's key, is uh, just, just brew the espresso, put it in, this is called storm pour, put it in storm pour and get it into the refrigerator. Do not run it through ice to chill the coffee because then you dilute the coffee and you no longer have, or the espresso, you no longer have that strong flavor that we're looking for. So um, we're going to put that off to the side. Now, um, equal portions, of course, of the uh, vanilla vodka and the coffee liqueur. Excellent. I'm going to put these back. And of course, you make a little mess. You clean a little mess. There we go. OK. Now we're going to add our espresso. And I know it's not a poor spout, but we're going to try to just figure out an equal portion that, that works for you. And you, of course, can adjust it to your own flavor. But this is my drink, and we're going to make it this way. So here we are. Now, we aren't going to add any simple syrup to this because you know, with the coffee, it's not really a sweet drink. It's meant to be a little bit more on the bitter side. So I'm going to shake this up real good. Now, what the key to this drink is all preparation, OK? So what you're going to want to do is, um, before you even go about preparing the cocktail itself, you're going to prepare what I like to call the magic cream. And I have a container of it right here, of course. Now, what this is is heavy whipping cream. And I know what you're saying. You're watching your weight. Heavy whipping cream, you know, what are you going to do? So uh, you need heavy whipping cream because it is, you're able to fluff it and get the air into it. So we're going to give it some good, healthy shakes. And what I add into this is sugar. I like to use organic sugar these days. Um, but sugar and a little bit of hazelnut liqueur. Uh, the good thing with this cream is you can actually adapt this for many different recipes or uh, drink ideas. 
with just changing the liqueur that you add to the cream and um, of course changing the ultimate flavor of it. So now we have everything in place. We need the perfect glass. This is such a beautiful glass. So a lot like the garnish, the glass has everything to do with a good drink. So uh, here we are. Let's give it a little bit of a pour of our espresso martini. Now if you notice, you know, you had two dark things went in there and then of course the clear vanilla vodka and once you shake it up it kind of gets a frothy little cloudy look to it and that's perfect that's not not bad at all that's a good thing so um, and once again the secret to the cream is you really need to get the air fluffed into it it needs to lay on top of the drink itself so I'm gonna sample a little bit on the side just to make sure we're in the right place there we are and now the pizza resistance <laughs> the cream on the espresso martini. Whoops, my apples are falling here. And there you have it. And what we're going to do to top it all off is a little bit of cinnamon, or a lot of cinnamon, depending. But that's OK. You know why? Because you're going to drink it. And I promise you, it tastes so good. And uh, people. Believe me, the, the response is they take a sip and then they stop and they do a little move and a double take. Believe me, it happens. They'll do a double take on it and uh, it'll blow their minds. It tastes a lot like a liquid tiramisu. Now, of course, once again, one of my favorites. That's why we're showing it to you here today. I need someone to taste it. Uh, Brent, are you available, Brent? I've been available before. Okay. What's what the you, skull? Oh, what are you doing there? No, we already did that one. It's Let's Uzo, though. Good. I, well, it is Uzo. Let me hey, put that over Hey, what's this you, called, Hey, Scott? hey, hey. Get out of there, Brent. You, uh, I was going to have you. Hey, Steph. It. Yeah. That's a pretty good martini. You should win some awards and shit for that. <laughs> well, you know, the idea is to win awards, Brent. What's I, this called? Coffee beans? Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to just eat those. Like they don't taste them. very good. I don't recommend it. It's the Cocktail Chef Show, folks. Stay with us, please. Okay, get ready to spice up those tasty beverages with the perfect garnish. It adds everything to the perfect cocktail. So, please stay tuned to the Cocktail Chef Show for the Garnish Garage. <laughs>